not to try and create some new doctrine, but I think the Passover sacrifice should be in the forefront of our thinking these days. I mean, the foreshadowing of Christ's work on the cross, as well as the reminder of where we would be without him, should keep us humble. And so I just want to look at this, and we're going to find uh, in Exodus 12, 1 through 14, and look at what is the Passover sacrifice. I'm going to read those 14 verses. I know it's a lot, but I'm going to read those 14 verses for you. It says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be your beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak to all the congregation of Israel, saying, On the tenth of this month, every man shall take for himself a lamb according to the house of his father, a lamb for a household, and if um, the household is too small for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next to his house take it according to the number of the persons. According to each man's need, you shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. Now you shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the um, lintel of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs, and they shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head and its legs, its entrails, you shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire. And thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in the haste, or eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all gods of Egypt. I will ex execute judgment i am the lord now the blood shall be assigned for you on the house where you are in and when i see the blood i will pass over you and the plague shall uh, not be on you to destroy you when i strike the land of egypt so this day shall be to you a memorial and you shall keep it as a feast to the lord throughout your generations you shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance and i know that's a lot of stuff to read <clears throat> but we start off here it says this going to be the first month. It's a new beginning. And I, I want to take a little bit of uh, I don't know, leeway here in talking about this and say that when we look at the Passover sacrifice, we know that it's a, a foreshadowing of the work of the cross and, and, and the atonement for our sins. Um, it, there is a element of that that's completely uh, one-to-one transparent linkage but the first month it's a new beginning and you know what christ did for us on the cross creates that new beginning and so you know we look at that in the first place and recognize that the passover sacrifice is one that is that is tied to that concept of a new beginning a new year a new beginning and um, what christ did on the cross for us is a new beginning for us. And sometimes, you know, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get tired and I get lazy and I get um, emotionally disconnected from uh, the things that I'm doing and, and you can become discouraged in, in different things. But the bottom line is when I remember what Christ did, when I really remember what Christ did, it creates a new beginning. It creates a new uh, perspective, a, a fresh start, if you will. So there's that tie-in to the idea of a new beginning, but there's also uh, more to it than just that. Uh, you know, it said basically a lamb to a house, and talking about a house, you know, you're generally talking about a family, family unit. Um, we t we've talked about the sacrifice uh, in the Old Testament, you know, the sin sacrifice where you know, the, the uh, animal had the family name on there, and we could tie that to the work of the cross as well. But it, it's, a personal, it's a personal sacrifice. It's a personal remembrance. Uh, the family comes together, remembers the sacrifice of the Passover. There's a, there's a tie to that. And the blood on the doorpost and the, and the header of the house 
as Christ goes, or excuse me, as yes, as Christ, you know, has paid the price for us for our sin. And, and in this case, the, the, the sacrifice was made, the blood was, was marked on the doorpost, the entrance, the, the threshold, the gateway, the doorway to the house. And, and, it, and of course, here in Exodus, you know, in, in total context with what we just read, they're getting ready to leave captivity. And in and, and that process of getting ready to leave captivity... The Lord has said he's going to come through and take the firstborn of those that don't have the Passover, that don't have the blood on the doorpost, don't have the, the blood on the header of the door. <clears throat> and Passover literally means to exempt. Uh, so the wages of sin is death. And the sacrifice that Christ made is our exemption to that penalty. In other words, he paid the price it doesn't exempt that there's a payment for sin it exempts us from paying for our sin because he already paid it for us and so there's a tie to that it, there's a, there's a tie to the firstborn here and um you know we've got some stuff we're gonna be talking about next week with regards to that but but the the firstborn the first of your family the first to come you know up from your marriage that's who's going to be lost. And that represents really your future. That's what you're going to lose. You're going to lose the future. The next generation is going to be lost. The, the hope of tomorrow is going to be lost. If you don't have the exemption brought, uh, bought and paid for by the sacrifice and by the blood, if you don't have that, that's what you're risking. That's what you're putting on the line. And it, you know, you'll notice it says, um, uh, let's see, I'll make sure I find this correctly. It says in verse 12, For I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all gods of Egypt, against all gods, all, all their gods, in other words, it's reinforcing that there is one God. It's reinforcing that our God is, is God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. It, it reinforces that. And, and as we look at it in our own life, do we remember the Passover sacrifice? Do we pay attention to that sacrifice? Do we recognize all those things? Or do we get caught up in the mumbo-jumbo of other gods? And you say, well, no, 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 I don't do that. But um, you, know, you may say, well, you know, knock on wood, right? Just in case, you know, I'm not saying I'm superstitious, but just in case, I'll knock on wood. Well, what are you doing? You're, you're saying that there's other gods, right? Um, well, I, you know, I'm just um, trying to be lucky here. I just, you know, I, I, if I... If I put on my lucky shirt uh, or, you know, those are my lucky socks or, um, you know, uh, hey, things started going good when I stopped shaving. So I, I'm not going to shave for a while until I until my luck changes. What are you investing in? And you say, well, OK, that's all superstitious stuff. Well, so what if what if it's, uh, you know, well, it's been a hard day. I just need I need a glass of wine in order to deal with the stress of the day. Well, what are you investing in? Other gods. You say, well, you know, and I'm not like that, but, um, you know, my job is uh, my identity. Well, you don't say it that way, but you identify yourself by your job. Now, what are you doing with your job? Are you making it a god? To serve? To worship? To identify with? And this may sound hard. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to. You know, just um, be a complete jerk here. But I just want you to stop and think about the fact that th what Christ did uh, is is you know really foreshadowed here in this discussion of the Passover sacrifice. And are we paying attention to the Passover sacrifice? I know there's the season of Passover and all. 
I'm, as a Christian, are you putting what Christ did in proper perspective? Is, are you remembering it uh, appropriately? That's what I'm really talking about. And then verse 14 says something, if I can find it. Verse 14 says, So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. A memorial. Where, where have we heard that phrase before in the Bible? Well, wasn't it when we talked about communion, this do in remembrance of me? And the phrase there refers to a memorial. A, mem a, a memory of, in memory. Do this. Do what? Partake of the communion, which does what? Which talks about the blood and, and the, um, the body that was broken for our sins. Which ties to what? The Passover, where the lamb is roasted and eaten and the, and the wine is consumed or the, uh, yeah, the wine is consumed as, um, as a likeness to the blood. So, this do in remembrance of me and this, you know, this uh, sacrifice keep throughout the generations. What are we pointing at? We're pointing at remembering the Passover, remembering the exemption that was given us, remembering the price that was paid. And, you know, Christ got um, a lot of kickback when he said, this, this is my body and, and you, you, know, you need to eat unless you eat of my body and, and drink of my blood. And they're like, oh my goodness, this guy's gone off the deep end. What was he talking about? He was talking about uh, the exact process of the Passover, which they weren't having any problem with. Uh, oh yeah, well, of course we can do the Passover. We remember that's how we got out of Egypt, you know, so many generations ago. Well, yeah. But that's what he was referring to. He was referring to, in fact, that's what the, pack, the Passover was referring to what was going to happen with Christ. Christ is tying them all together, and they, and they kind of lost their mind about it. So there's the historic aspect of it in remembrance of. There's the historic part. Remember what happened. You know, we just celebrated 9-11, uh, you know, the 20th anniversary of 9-11, where we said, you know, re, we're, we're, you know, we're going to remember. We we'll, won't forget Right. And yet so many of us have. And then there's, you know, I've heard people talk about, well, you know, we remember 9-11, but we, we need to remember 9-12. And 9-12 was when uh, basically America and Americans stood in outrage at what had happened. And um, I, I don't want to get all lost in politics, but I can tell you that uh, that s that that unity that occurred on 9-12, uh, by the evening of 9-12, or certainly the morning of 9-13, was being uh, eroded by politicians. Uh, and too many of us in America are paying attention to what politicians think, and not enough politicians are paying attention to what Americans think. That needs to change. But it comes when we do remember we remember that sacrifice, but we need to remember what Christ did. We're not serving a government. We're serving a God. And God provided the Passover, provided the exemption, provided the atonement for our sin. And we need to remember that both historically, tied to communion and our salvation. We need to remember those things. Now, our role in keeping the Passover sacrifice first is to remember what was done. And, and then it comes, it becomes not just remembering, but honoring. We need to honor what Christ did. We need to honor that exemption that we were given we need to recognize and 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 give praise for what was done thank god for what was done you know throughout history 
things happen. People write songs and poems about those things. And that's what much of our songs and hymns in the church are, is they're, they're basically honoring and remembering things that uh, we know from Scripture. And I always think of uh, the song that says, um, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and the rider thrown into the sea. And it's talking about what happened when the Lord parted the Red Sea and the children of Israel were able to, to pass over. And somebody once said they, because they, they put that song together on the other side of the Red Sea, said, you know, they had the right song but the wrong side of the river. They should have had it in faith on the side before uh, he parted the waters rather than on the other side. And I would simply say this, while there may be some merit to that statement, um, the, at least they wrote the song. At least they sang it. And the, the bottom line is, uh, are, we, are we even remembering? Are we even doing that? Are we memorializing and singing? So when we worship in church, are we thinking about the words, or do we just like, you know, that's kind of a cool chord progression, or um, I, I guess most people wouldn't say that's a cool chord progression. They'd probably say, oh, I like the way that sounds. Um, but, or I like that particular phrase, but are we thinking about the whole picture of, of what is being said in, in the, that song? Are we paying attention to what's, um, what we're singing? Are we applying it to our life? And, and, and as we do that, it makes the word all the more powerful in the, in the room. It makes the whole service all the more powerful. And as we participate on that level, as we bring the sacrifice of praise, as we do those things, it lifts us up. And that's one of many reasons why we don't want to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. You know, why we hear things like iron sharpens iron. But, you know, it, it, being alongside someone can help lift both of you up. Now, we've been tying all of these things together with uh, the seven deadly sins, which are something that was, was put together by, a, um, I think, a monk, actually. But um, put together to um, kind of talk about the, the different um, sins that, uh, that so easily, you know, kind of beset us. And the fifth sin, because we're talking about the fifth sacrifice, the fifth sin is, is a sin of wrath. And I want to talk about that for a few minutes. Wrath is strong anger and hate towards another person. Strong anger and hate towards another person. Now, um, you see, well, I, I don't have that problem. That's not, that's not where I'm at in my thinking. I don't, I don't deal with that that way or, you know, whatever your excuse might be. Um, but let's see what, what the word kind of kind of lead us towards i want to go to romans 12 and verse 19 it says therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another do not destroy the work of god for the sake of food all things indeed are pure but it is evil for the man who eats with offense and and i'm going to stop there because that's verse 19 and 20 start with 19 again Therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace. Hmm. Huh. Let us pursue the things which make for peace. And in my Bible, which make is italicized, which means it wasn't there. And the original was added for better sentence structure and flow and stuff. So it would read, let us therefore pursue the things for peace. What are you pursuing? Are you pursuing being right? I'll show them. Don't cross me. I'll make you pay. I'm only doing what's right. Or are you pursuing peace? And we talked <clears throat> a couple weeks ago about peace. And it's not absence of conflict. That's what we tend to boil it down to. But God's peace is, is, is a whole different thing. And so if I'm pursuing peace, if I'm pursuing God's peace, if I'm doing that, I'm really looking to set things in order. I'm really letting, looking for God to reign over the whole situation. And if I'm doing that, wouldn't I want that person to come closer to God? 
wouldn't I want that situation to be more committed and turned into to being in God's hands? And that brings us to verse 20, which says, do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. Well, we could go into all the verse there and really break it all out, but this is all part of what's called the law of love. And when it says, <coughs> do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food, we could say, do not destroy the work of God so that you can look good or so you can be right or so that you can be smart or <clears throat> so that you can make somebody you don't like look bad. So when we talk about wrath, what we're really talking about is letting God's peace reign. We're talking about letting God's way go first. And we're not talking about elevating ourselves in front of all these things. And that sort of ties together with the idea of what the Passover sacrifice is all about because it is our exemption. In other words, he paid it for us all. One lamb per family, one lamb per person, if you will, uh, personal walk with, with Christ. You know, we could say, well, you know, that's fine for me, but I don't know if I want to see God give you grace because I deserve it and, you know, I don't like you, so you may not deserve grace. Well, that's not how it works. The sacrifice was made, and if it's applied, we could say if it's applied to the doorpost of your heart, but if it's applied, that exemption, that Passover, also applies and that would be spreading God's love and God's peace and not throwing and destroying that all away for, for a little bit of food right now. Now, the fifth sin being wrath also it, uh, read a thing here. It says patience cures wrath. Patience cures wrath. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can look at that. But you, you've often heard it said, you know, oh, don't pray for patience. And I've talked about that many times over the years and why I don't like that phrase. But anyway, um, patience cures wrath. Wrath comes from unfulfilled situations. In other words, I said uh, wrath is strong anger and hate towards another person. You're unfulfilled in some way, and so you let your wrath be poured out on them. You're not happy with the punishment for what they did that you think was wrong, whatever it might be. You're not fulfilled in, in, in this, that relationship with that person. You don't like them. They don't like you, whatever it is. Um, they, they cheated you in a business deal, what, what, whatever it might be. They made fun of you in seventh grade and you've never gotten over it. Uh, but you know what? Patience, in this in instance, patience is really tied to the ability to give it to God. Um, th the Bible says, vengeance is mine. Um, I will repay. We'll talk about that in future weeks also. But the, the simple fact of the matter is, when I'm able to put it in God's hands, when I am able to bring peace to the situation, God's peace, because it's flowing through me, because I'm trusting God, I don't have to get tied up in wrath. I can relax a little bit. Remembrance overcomes wrath. You say, I don't know what that means. Well, let me help you. Remembrance. Where I came from and where I am ties right back to the Passover sacrifice. Remembrance where I came from. I was lost and captive and hopeless. And then there was an opportunity to have the Passover, the exemption from what I was due, what I was going to receive, and I miraculously be set free. And that brings me to where I am. And where I am, I'm not capable of, of having gotten here by myself. Without God's blessing, without God's provision, without God's salvation, without all of those things, without the Passover that he provided through Christ, I wouldn't be where I am today. And when we can recognize those things, we can begin to move in, into that right attitude regarding the Passover sacrifice, and it will bring us to, to a place of humility in um, the book of, of Hebrews, whoops, got to go the right way, Dan. In the book of Hebrews, 
Uh, we find a, a verse here I want to reference. Verse uh, uh, chapter 13. Let me get there. Chapter 13 and verse 15, which says, Therefore, let us go forth to him outside the camp bearing his... Excuse me, that's 13. Not 15. Therefore, it does start therefore. Verse 15. Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. And then it says, but do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifice, God is well pleased. The sacrifice of praise. We've talked about it as we've been looking at this kind of sub-series within Tending the Altar, talking about the sacrifices. But the sacrifice of praise, remembering and thanking God for what he did for the Passover sacrifice, thanking him for the work of the cross, remembering where we came from and where we are and, and giving thanks for that. Being one who would bring that remembrance and bring the idea of peace and sharing the good news <coughs> over being angry, over being wrath, be, over being uh, prideful and all of those things. We need to remember the Passover sacrifice. Now, I would, I would encourage you in, in this regards also. Um, you know, we, we have been doing the Sunday school series now for a, a, over a year and a half, or around a year and a half, uh, completely on video. We haven't been in the same room for about 18 months. And hopefully, in the very near future, we'll be able to go back to, to meeting in the same room. At this point, we're, you know, what's holding us up is just a lot of logistics in terms of um, how we put all this together and, and, and um, get it rolling with uh, keeping video going, et cetera. And I know there's some folks who watch these videos, and they, <coughs> you know, they— they don't even attend the, the, the church here. Maybe they don't even live in this state, and that's great. But, um, w you know, w we need to do some things in order to better facilitate the ability to share the lessons, and, and we'll be talking about that in the, in the future. But if, if these things are encouraging to you, if the, if the messages are encouraging to you, you know, I, I think our best tool for, for things like that is through Facebook right now. Unfortunately, that's that's kind of the, the best tool we have for some kind of feedback. But, I mean, you know, make a comment. Um, put a like up there or whatever. So we see your feedback as to the value to you or not of, of the lessons. And if you have the ability to share that out to someone else, do that. If it's encouraging to you, maybe it would be encouraging to them as well the bottom line is the the bible tells us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb passover is all about the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and the word of our testimony is what has god done for you and i am amazed in the time since this we've entered this you know whole uh, pandemic and lockdowns and unlock and mask and unmask and vaccine and unvaccine and all the stuff that's gone on. I'm amazed at one thing that has been underreported but very apparent, and that is there are people that are much closer to God than they were when this started. They are hungry for more of God, more so than when this first started and for you you may you know maybe you're in a place where you're not fully resolved with all this stuff you know, like you're kind of you know drawn like a moth to the flame a little bit to to pay a little more attention to what's going on spiritually and maybe you're trying to weigh out you know this this philosophy versus that's that philosophy and i would simply tell you this the work of the cross, what Christ did on the cross, what we've been talking about here today with regard to the Passover, the history of the Passover and how it ties to the work of the cross that Christ did and how it affects our lives 
today. There is peace available through Jesus Christ. There is peace available through giving your life to Christ. There is, there is peace that's not available in, in, in any other way. And I would encourage you to turn to Christ and you can simply say a simple prayer and, just, and say, Father, forgive me my sins. And I ask that you would come in and be Lord in my life. And, and, and if, you know, if you're not sure today, that's a great place to start. Start right there. And, and today, partake in, in the concept of, of the fact that there is a Passover, an exemption for you that's available through what Christ did on the cross. And if that's you, if, if, if you pray that prayer today you know you could even put that in a comment that would be great to know too but the bottom line is we need god we need to remember the work of the cross we need to remember the passover sacrifice and then we need to share the gospel to those around us and share the good news and that's it for today mm-hmm.